Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Angela. Today I have two larger scale projects, which I hope is something that you enjoy. I know from time to time, I love to create projects that are a little bit more involved and take a little bit more time to put together. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comment down below. Do you enjoy putting together these bigger, larger scale projects that you can really utilize year round for all of your decorating needs? Let's get started. Dough bowls are seen everywhere right now in home stores and home styling. So that's going to be our first project today. I actually saw Wendy over at White Sparrow Living create this and I knew I had to do something similar. So I got these tombstone looking styrofoam pieces from the Dollar Tree. I picked up eight of them. You do want to make sure you remove that little metal piece that is the stake that holds them into the ground. And then I'm going to start hot gluing them together. So I have eight and I'm creating two two stacks of four of the styrofoam tombstones glued together. So here's the two sets of four glued together and they don't resemble anything even close to the shape of a dough bowl. So what I'm going to do is take my pencil and just start outlining where I want to cut down these styrofoam tombstones at. And then I'm going to take it out into my garage. This was a super messy part of the process. And I'm going to take my jigsaw. I did put it on a very low setting, low speed, so that I could have better control over cutting it out. And I just started cutting down section by section. My blade was not long enough to go through all four of these tombstones at once so i had to cut through it cut through like two and a half of them and then i would have to keep flipping it over and then cutting out the other side and you don't have to use a jigsaw to do this wendy from white sparrow living she used a kitchen knife a serrated kitchen knife and that worked great for her i just figured if i had this tool i might as well use it is easily sandable and you can manipulate it with a sanding block or sandpaper. So I just went over top of the entire thing with my sanding block just to get out any of those lumps and bumps that were left behind from the saw blade. Now I need to cut out the middle of this. So once again, I'm taking my pencil and just outlining where I want to cut out the center. And on most dobles, these are hand carved pieces of wood and the sides are a little bit thicker where you would like kind of pick it up like as if it were a handle. So I did leave that part a little bit wider and then just taking a box cutter here, I'm just slashing up some strips in it. I ended up taking out three of the styrofoam tombstones, leaving one for the bottom base of the dough bowl. Now to cover up all of the ugliness of the styrofoam, I'm taking some poster board and just tracing out the inside. I did have to cut this down several times. I was actually really bad at tracing it, but once I finally got it figured out and it was able to fit inside of my styrofoam, I just taped that down with some painter's tape and then starting started cutting out strips of the poster board to angle them down because the doble sides are like at a slant. They are not straight up and down and this is exactly what Wendy did in her project as well which I thought was absolutely genius. So I just started bending the pieces of poster board around where I needed them to be, taping them down in place and working my way around the entire inside of the dough bowl. Next, we're gonna do some super fun but super messy paper mache. So I'm taking this shipping paper that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna start cutting it down into long strips. After I cut all of my long strips down, I did cut a lot of them in half so they would be a little bit smaller and easier to work with. 
I would recommend cutting these down to about two inch width strips. I think that would work out the best when it comes to overlapping the pieces of paper and getting less ripples. Next, I'm gonna take this jot glue. This is the bigger size that they have at the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm gonna start pouring it into a bowl. This bowl ended up being way too big and I put it in a smaller one here in a second. But I'm just going to add some water to water down my mixture and make it more of the consistency that I need for the paper mache. So you can see how runny it is here. Now we can start adding in our strips of paper to the glue mixture. You wanna make sure you get them pretty good and covered in the glue. I realized at first that my mixture was not quite runny enough. You can still see that it's pretty thick on there. So after I added this first strip, I did go back, add in a little bit more water so that it was a little bit thinner and easier to work with. I'm just gonna start covering up the entire thing. I did end up having to do this over two days because I needed that glue paper mache mixture to dry on the top before I could flip it over and then do the bottom. The great thing about these dobles and using the paper mache as your like main medium for making this, dobles are hand carved wood. So all of those imperfections in the paper and the wrinkles and the lumps and bumps that you get just really did add to the authentic look of this piece. Now I do, notice some of the like paper strips on my finished project and I wish I had actually ripped them down on the edges rather than cut them off. I would have cut them lengthwise but then ripped them on the sides so that it was a little bit more seamless as they fit together but overall I'm still super happy and pleased with the way this turned out. But once I'm done with the paper mache part, let that all dry. I am taking Mod Podge and putting a good layer over top of the entire piece just to make sure it is all nice and sealed together and all of that paper is stuck down really well. Then we can go on to painting. So I'm starting out with this Territorial Beige Color by Apple Barrel. I wanted to give it kind of a lighter look. I had thought at first that's what I was going for. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I started adding in some white. I wanted to give it that kind of light wood but white washed effect. So I'm taking this Linen White by Rust-Oleum and I am dry brushing again over top of the entire piece. This time I gave it a really, really heavy dry brush of the white to pretty much cover up the entire thing. So here you can start to see how it's looking with the heavy coat of the white dry brushing. And it did look good. It just, after a day or two of sitting on it and then just looking at it, I realized it wasn't exactly what I was going for. I did want it to have more of that wood look and a darker look for my living room. So I went back in with the territorial beige. I gave this a pretty good dry brushing over top of the entire thing once again. And then while that was still wet, I went in with the DIY dark wax. This stuff was a game changer for this project. If you haven't tried this yet, you seriously need to. I was going to use the Waverly Antique Wax, but I'm so glad that I didn't. I love the Antique Wax, but I think it would have given a different look and more of a warmer tone to the Doble, which wasn't exactly what I was going for. So I'm so happy that I used this DIY Dark Wax and I just kept building it up and especially in all of the like areas where there were wrinkles in the paper and it just added so much depth and dimension to this piece. I am so happy with the way that it turned out. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. Is this something that you would ever take on? Is it way too involved for you? Do you enjoy more of the easy and simpler projects? Sometimes I just really love these larger scale projects.
Next up, I have a giant lantern that I am building and I'm not exaggerating when I say this thing is giant. So I stopped at the Dollar Tree and I grabbed eight of these 11 by 14 inch frames and I'm going to start out by removing the backs, removing the glass, and then also removing those little tabs that hold down your glass and your backer in place. Once I have everything removed, then I'm going to take my E6000 and I'm going to put this on a majority of the bottom part of my frame. And then I'm also going to add in a small little dab of hot glue on either end just to hold it in place for the short term while that E6000 has time to set up. And then I clamp it in place, allowing it to dry overnight. And then the next day I came back, I did that with all eight of my frames. So I created four sides and then the next day I came back and I'm going to start building the rectangle that is the shape of my lantern. Again, using my E6000 and then hot glue in the spaces where there is not E6000. You do not want to overlap the two. And then I'm just going to add in my each of my frame sides to build out that rectangular shape lantern. And this time I had to use my little mini clamps. I love these things. I got them from Harbor Freight and they are just so cute, but I use those to hold everything together. Then once that was dry the next day, I am going to build a bottom for this. So I'm just using some foam core board. I traced out the bottom of my lantern. And when you're cutting foam core board, you do wanna make sure you have a nice sharp X-Acto knife. I knew mine needed replaced, so I just decided to replace it before cutting out this piece. And then I'm going to cut out that square. Now I did realize I traced out the outside of my lantern, but I actually wanted it to fit inside of the lantern itself so that it was flush against the bottom of the frames so i do go back in and trace that out the inside and then cut those edges down a little bit so that it's going to fit perfectly and everything is going to be nice and level against the ground Once I have that figured out, I'm just going to hot glue my foam core base right to the bottom of my lantern. And now comes the messy and time consuming part of this project. If you've been following me for a while, you know I'm still working through this giant five gallon tub of joint compound that I've had for months for my bathroom renovation. This is actually the last time I'm going to get to use it because it is starting to go bad and there's still probably half a container of that thing left. So note to self, don't ever buy a giant tub of joint compound that you don't need. But I just start covering the entire lantern all the way around the outside. And yes, I do love watching true crime while I'm crafting. So that's what's on my TV right now. But I'm not worrying about getting this nice and smooth. I actually want it to be very textured. That's the look that I'm going for with this project. Once I cover the entire outside, I let that dry overnight and then I'm taking a sanding block and I'm just lightly going over it just to knock down any of those sharp edges. So I was trying to get a little glimpse of that on the underneath part here where you can see it's just very lightly over top. I don't wanna get rid of that texture. And then I'm going to do the same thing, repeating that process on the entire inside of my lantern and then let that dry as well. Now we need to build a top for this thing and I really didn't know what I was going to do for this and I don't know that this is even going to hold up very well but I took some dowel rods that I have. These are kind of a larger size than a variety pack that I have and I'm going to cut them down to the height that I want them to be for how tall I want the top of my lantern. Once I have those cut down I am taking them and adding to the corners of the inside top of my lantern and I'm using my Starbond glue to do this as a temporary hold. Now I knew this wasn't going to work. I knew I needed to add the joint compound to hold those in place more. I didn't do that at first because I was honestly being lazy and didn't wanna wait another day for joint compound to dry. 
in the end, and in the end, I had to do that anyways. So I should have just done it from the beginning. But here you can see this was a few days later. I had to go back in and add that joint compound to make sure those dowels were going to stay in place. So for the inside of it, you can see I have a little top there. I ended up changing it. Actually, I wanted to show you how tall this thing was. And my dog is terrified of tape measures. I really try to get him to not be so scared of things. He is such a baby. So I make him sniff everything that he's terrified of before I use it. But he didn't care. He, he left anyways. But this thing is just under three feet tall. It is massive. Next, I'm going to take some of these bamboo skewers from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna start cutting them down because I wanna add a little bit of detail to the sides of my lantern. I was going to do like the X that you see everywhere on lanterns and decided, no, I wanted to do something a little bit different, give it a little bit more interest. So I decided to add a kind of a frame inside of this frame. So I added two horizontal pieces and then two vertical pieces that kind of overlapped on the corners so that it gave a nice visual interest to this piece. And then I cut all of those down, then hot glued them in place. And I did this all the way around my lantern. As I was saying before, there was a top to my lantern, which you kind of saw a peek of, but I ended up having to change that out because I used one of the wood shadow boxes from the Dollar Tree. That ended up being too heavy and was initially what broke my dowels and why I had to go back and replace them. So I ended up replacing it with foam core board and I'll show you that here in just a minute. Once I am done adding all of my detail, I am taking this heirloom white spray paint and I'm going to give it a nice coat. I don't really worry about getting the dowels because I do want to paint those a different color. The reason I didn't add those on afterwards was because I didn't think the glue would then stick to my paint after I had done the spray paint. So now I'm after my spray paint dried, I'm taking a sponge with the color Warm Buff from Apple Barrel. And I thought this would be the easiest way to cover and paint the dowels because they are round. And this actually worked out really nicely and I was able to I had to put a couple of coats because it is an acrylic paint but it worked out really well using this sponge and I just covered all of my dowels in this color now we can finally make the top out of our foam core board so I just took that shadow box from the Dollar Tree I traced out the bottom of it to have my square base and then I'm measuring out the sides to cut those down out of the foam board as well I wanted this to be about the same size as that original box so then I'm going to take my sides that I cut out and I'm going to glue them attaching them to the square to create that same shadow box look the one I created out of foam core board did end up being slightly bigger than the original just based on how I glued, how I attached those sides, but I'm really happy with the way this turned out and it looks very similar, just weighs a lot less. Next, I took some eight millimeter beads and I'm going to line the entire top to cover up those seams. And lastly, I am just taking this Dollar Tree faux leather ribbon. It is in like the gold kind of champagne color. And I'm cutting out two strips because I want to glue them together so that you don't see that white underside when I attach this as the handle of my lantern. And then I did take some gold paint just to go over the edges where I had glued it because you could still kind of see that white. But once I had finished that, I'm just going to hot glue it to the top of my lantern. I added that foam core board shadow box on top as well, just with some hot glue. And that was it for this project. So let me know what you think of it. I actually have a fun way I want to display this for Christmas. So stay tuned. I will share that in an upcoming video. That was actually the whole reason why I created this lantern in the first place. But since I had done it now, I wanted to share it a little early. At the very least, it definitely needs some more fairy lights.
Thanks for hanging out with me today, friends. Check out these other videos I think you might enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.